Hi, welcome to Raw Math. Today I'm doing a series of videos on lines, linear equations, and functions. And when you have all these words, you also have to include the words domain and range. Domain and range in math seem to be very complicated. And sometimes the things in math that are the most complicated are only complicated because they're not complicated and students cannot believe something in math can be simple. Domain literally means x values, my x values. My x values are negative one, three, negative seven, and eight. Now, this little curly bracket is how you do a set of numbers. So if you're laundry listing a set of numbers, you put it in the curly brackets. You often see this for answers as well. It's set notation and it's the set of the domain. In our next one, I'm gonna kind of jump through these quickly, but do it topic by topic. My domain is, and I at all times pause the video, try it before I tell you the answer. In this case, my domain, let's see, we have a five, we have a negative two, we have a four. Now we have a five, but we already wrote five and we're not gonna write it twice. We only write the elements once. Now you're saying, well, should we write them in order? And my answer is sure, if you want to, you're more than welcome to change this to negative two, four, five. You're more than welcome to change this to negative seven, negative one, three, eight. You don't have to though. There's nothing that says that set notation has to be smallest to largest. A number line does, but set notation doesn't. Um, for this domain, our x values is everything from here to here. So our domain is actually, we're not going to, we're, we're going to do a different kind of set notation. We're going to say x such that. That just means we're going to define x not as a laundry list, but as a description. This notation with this line says we're going to describe x. We're not going to list the finite elements because the elements are not finite. X is from negative six to positive six. And I'm gonna use inequality for that. And I still use my set notation. Okay, let's talk a little bit about range. Range translates to Y values. So my Y values are two, four, two, I already have my two written, and negative five. All right, again, pause, work ahead. My range on my second one is six, zero, four, and negative five. And on my third one, my range value up and down, it's all of my Y values. Y exists in this graph everywhere between these two points. So again, I'm gonna use this line. I'm gonna say Y such that, let's see, Y starts at negative two and goes all the way up to positive two. All right. so. Next, we are asked about, is this a function and why? So a function is a function if it, the input leads to a single output. So if I make a little drawing, if I have a machine, um, okay, here's my function machine. Okay, there's my machine. If you put something into the machine, you should be, be able to predict what comes out of it. Now, if I put in, like a machine could be an oven. And if I put in a frozen pizza, I expect if my function is working, my oven is working to get a cooked pizza out of the other side. If I put a frozen pizza into an oven and out came a birthday cake, awesome but not a function because we cannot predict the output from the input. So in terms of math, if all of your input, and your input is your domain, if all of your domain values are unique, you have a function. So this one is a function, why? Because all inputs, or x values if you would rather, are unique. For this one, five, five. This is not a function, why? Because x equals five repeats. That's the very direct answer. Or you can say inputs are not unique. It's really just that simple. 
if your x values are all different, it's a function. If your x values repeat, it's not a function. We do not look at range at all. We do not care that the range has two twos. That's not an issue for us. What is an issue is if the inputs repeat. We should be able to predict the output from the input. And many inputs might have the same output. That's fine. But a single input should not yield multiple outputs. For this one, this one is not a function. Um, and it's really fun with a graph because you test with something called the vertical line test. The vertical line test says if you can draw a vertical line that hits your graph in two spots, it is not a function. So for this last one, it is not a function. Why? Because it doesn't, there's an e, doesn't pass the vertical line test, which my students usually say VLT and don't worry about any of those other words in there. All right. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, like my Facebook page, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.